So today I'm in the kitchen making bennachin or chebue. There are different ways to make bennachin with or without tomato, with meat, fish or chicken. It's my best dish of all time. So for the ingredients, these are what you need for meat bennachin. You could put as much vegetables as you like, but these are the vegetables that I would put because I don't eat cooked vegetables. A kilo of beef, tablespoon of salt and black pepper, oil, cabbage, tomatoes, bell pepper, cucumber, carrots, stock cube, onions, garlic, scotch bonnet, parsley, and yeet, which is like dried um, snail, and the rice, of course. So I start by adding the salt to the to the meat which sort of season the meat and then I would go on to prepare the seasoning of the bennachin which I prepare with the scotch bonnet, the garlic, the bell pepper and the two medium onions. So I blend this in my local food processor, it's a mortar and a pestle. I would start by blending or pounding the scotch bonnet and the garlic. I like to use this mortar and pestle because it doesn't turn the food to paste. You can control the texture of the seasoning. Um, so I'm starting with the scotch bonnet and the garlic. I would blend those first because I want those to be more blended than the onion and the bell pepper. Then before blending in the onion and the bell pepper, I would quickly chop them in very large pieces. And then I add them. Then just after blending for like two minutes, it will turn to this texture I like. And then I add the jimbo stock cube and the black pepper and the parsley all each one tablespoon and at the end I have this then I would divide it into two and the first half I would divide it again into two I'm making one quarter each then I would use the first quarter and add it to the meat I keep the other quarter away put the fire on and add about a cup and a half of oil because I'm cooking one kilo of rice it depends on the amount of rice the oil you add then I would fry the meat and add the dried snail to it if you don't have dried snail it's not a problem I just like the extra taste it adds to it but you can make delicious energy without the dry snail so I let that to fry you would have to let this fry until the meat gets brown which you would achieve in about 15 minutes and as it continue frying you would start seeing the onion would start to turn brown but that's not the brownness I'm talking about you would see that in a minute so about 15 minutes in real time you would achieve something like this don't forget to be turning it or else it might get burnt or the seasoning might get stuck at the bottom of the pan. So when you get here, you would I would add a splash of water and then let that water fry out. This I would repeat three times. After each time the water fries out. The reason for this is because it makes your rice very golden. Second splash. And you let the water fry out by mixing. Trust me. everything browner see the more splash you add the browner it becomes and 
you would have a very golden brown benching at the end and that's the tad splash we want our benching to be very brown so I do that the splashes three times and I let the final splash fry out and at the end I have something like this and this is brown enough for me so this is where I stop then I would add some water to the pot I would add about three liters of water three to four liters of water it depends on um, it depends on the meat how tender it is the meat we have around here is not very tender you need to boil it it's quite hard so after it has reached to boiling point I would add the half of the seasoning the first half and the carrot and the cabbage and the scotch bonnet mind you I'm not gonna eat the carrot and the cabbage I don't eat cooked <laughs> vegetables but I put it there because I believe that it has some sort of a taste to it which I like and if I happen to invite someone the person can have it if they like cooked vegetables then I will reduce the heat to medium and let that simmer for about an hour and I pass on to the rice I wash my rice I use tap water and just wash the rice rinse it out this step too I repeat it three times this step kind of help um, remove the starch in the rice then I drain it out and put it back in a big container and put it in the microwave where I'm going to kind of steam it for about three minutes and this is what you have so this is after an hour of simmering this is the sauce at the end of an hour at this point you can simmer as long as you want but I simmer minimum an hour just to make sure all everything is blended and blended in the sauce and tastes well and the meat is also cooked then I taste for salt if I'm satisfied then I would take out the vegetables And I forgot to say I like to eat my bemachin with tamarind regardless whether it's meat or fish bemachin I like tamarind so I add some sauce to tamarind before I add the rice to the sauce and then the last quarter of the seasoning is added to it don't ask me why I do this trust me it adds a little bit of je ne sais quoi it it adds a little it adds it, it I don't even know what I'm saying all I mean is that it makes a difference at least to me it does so I reduce the gas to like minimal and then after 10 minutes um, you would see that the rice has started to cook the one at the the ones at the bottom so I would turn my rice to allow the ones on top to cook and then cover it with foil and cover the pan after about 10 minutes or even 5 minutes 5 to 10 minutes you can check your rice and for me it was cooked and my benachin was ready and I was hungry at this point. I couldn't wait to eat it. So for the cucumber, bell pepper, and tomatoes, they are mainly to garnish. But I, because I don't like cooked vegetables, I always make sure I kind of have them like a side salad that I eat with my veggie, with my benachin. So here is my finished benachin, the plate I made for myself, which I really enjoyed. 
and I ate it with my tamarind and this went to the bin. Thank you guys for watching and see you next time. Bye!